and he's back. Welcome to part three of how to write a fantasy novel. We have looked at how to nurture an idea and a concept and plan around it. We have looked at what makes a great novel and the beauty of just jumping in and practicing and learning as you go. Today, we are going to be looking at what I call the unfinished syndrome. Boo! What I'm talking about is the starting of a novel and then dropping it three or four chapters in because you either run out of steam, ideas, or something else gets in the way. You're excited, something happens, yes, you've got this world, oh my god, it's gonna be amazing. Three chapters in and suddenly the steam goes and your words just fall off a cliff. That is absolutely fine. That happens a lot. It's completely natural when you consider the ebb and the flow of the plot. There will be down moments when everyone's gonna have a little chat around the campfire, sharpen their swords, do a bit of world building. And that might not be as exciting as a fight scene, let's say. What I'm gonna give you are six different ways of keeping you writing and keeping your productivity all the way up there. Tip the first, planning versus pantsing. If you've had that concept, fleshed it out as we discussed, and dived straight in, pantsing it all the way, maybe the initial concept or the ideas that you came up with are only enough for a couple of scenes. And that's why after three or four chapters, you might be burning out. This is what happens to me when I try and write by the seat to my pants. In those situations, I go back to the planning stage and I figure out why is the idea fizzled out? Why am I not excited about this anymore? Where will it lead? Usually within half an hour to an hour, sometimes a day or two, I'll have a fresh idea that will help me go forward. Number two, the unfinished syndrome can also occur when you're writing inconsistently. You're not getting that practice. There might be days or weeks in between writing and it's hard to get back into it. I'll say it one last time. This is fine. This, this, this is fine, 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 fine. A shit ton of authors out there work day jobs or have stressful family lives alongside writing. This is just one of the things we have to manage our writing around. What I find helps and what I always recommend is setting a time. What I mean by that is a portion of the day dedicated solely to writing. Be that 15 minutes on the bus to work or two hours once all the kids have gone to bed, so be it. If you can get into that routine, it helps you get into the flow quicker, keeps your excitement high, keeps the ideas fresh, and means you're practicing more as well. A win, win, win. Okay. Whatever happens in the day, that is your dedicated writing time. Doesn't matter how many words you get done in that time, just keep that your time. Tip the third, as well as setting a time, set a space. Your space is completely up to you. It could be anywhere. It could be a restaurant, it could be a cafe, forest, it could be a sewer tunnel, beach, abandoned factory. It's my little nook, my writing cave. It's where the magic happens, hopefully. This is all about focus and just making sure there are no other distractions that can get in the way of you and your words. Number four, staying in that vein of maximizing focus and creativity, upping that excitement, music. Now my background's in music, I've been playing bass and creating music and playing in bands for years. So this might not work for everyone, but it's something that really helps me, so I wanted to share it. On the days that I'm lacking in focus, creativity, inspiration, or even just energy, I find that music can actually transplant, if you will, some of those feelings into me. I can almost artificially generate that energy and inspiration I need. So I do this a lot. I've got a buttload of playlists there that I use when I'm writing pretty much all the time. Most of the time it's soundscape stuff without lyrics, things that can help me concentrate. Sometimes I use it to create a mood, such as like somber or epic mood, something like that, lots of tension. Other times I just want a soundtrack for a scene, like a fight scene, something epic. Other times I just want to wake myself up and get that, oh, let's do stuff feeling. And sometimes it's just to drown out the neighbors. So if you're in your writing space and just thinking, <laughs> Try that, see if it helps. Penultimate number five, keep a record of the words you write. I'd advise keeping a track of daily and weekly word counts. And what that does, it keeps a record of your achievement. It gives you something to look back on and be like, yeah, I wrote 200 or 1,000 or 5,000 words this week. Recognizing progress like that is inherently motivational and keeps you going throughout the weeks and days. And at very least, it gives you something to tweet about at the end of the day, like most authors out there, myself included. This brings me on to my six, sixth, sixth and final tip. I'm gonna make this super clear. Don't compare yourself. Humans cannot help compare things, it's what we do. And it's very, 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 very tempting to look at someone else's word counts and compare our own word counts against that. No! 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 
As we've said before, every author is different, every author works in their own way. Someone else's word counts have no bearing on what you can accomplish, especially if you're a first time author and this is your first ever book you've ever tried to write. Comparison is a little bitch because it removes that sense of achievement and progress and instead acts a bit more like a poison, giving you a bit of doubt, giving you distraction and taking your mind off that book and unfortunately, sometimes causing unfinished syndrome. So when you do see your fellow authors saying, oh, I've just written 5,000, 10,000 words in one afternoon, stop there, don't compare yourself, be happy for them, and at very least, take it as inspiration. Go back to your book and keep on writing. I hope that's helped, and if you wanna know more about productivity and maximizing it, I'll be doing a whole video all about it later on in this series. As for this video, we have come to the end, done. By now, you should know the importance of building a foundation upon your idea or concept, how to flesh it out, which areas to look at, such as plot, characters, and world building. You should also have a better idea of what makes a great book, how to write a great book, and how to actually physically sit down and write. This is definitely not the end. This is just the beginning. We still have to dive deeper into prose, world building, characters, publishing, marketing, the whole lot. So I will be back very soon. You can like or subscribe to make sure you don't miss those videos. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I hope somehow, even a little bit, this has helped. That's all for me. You have to go write a fantasy novel. You write it good!